A USB powered plasma ball. Now this has got a quite a small globe. It's only about uh, three inches diameter, which is about 75 millimeters. But it's actually surprisingly bright, given that this is running on five volts at between about 300 to 400 milliamps. 300 milliamps in its sort of state like this, and then when you put your, your hand on, sort of past the couple, you know, give it a better reference to ground, it then goes up to about 400 milliamps and increases in brightness as that streamer goes onto your finger. So um, yes, this isn't actually too bad. So I think we should take it to bits and see what's inside. So let's start with a little look at the theory. So here's our globe. Kind of made in the same way as a sort of standard lamp, but uh, a glass tube gets inserted like that into the middle. And in the case of this one, they've coated the inside, they've basically poured in a coating and just sort of coated the inside of that just at the end. And there is a specific reason they've just coated the end. Then leading up to that is a piece of plastic conduit. And again, the plastic conduit, it looks quite stylish. It's, it's a ribbed, it's a sort of corrugated plastic, but there's a reason for that as well. And then traditionally in the bad old days, you'd have used a standard television flyback transformer with a, with a driver circuit. So big fat transformer with the cable coming out and going basically up the middle of that to the end. And it might have just been flared out at the end. It might have just been folded over that conduit just to make contact with this, uh, with this black coating, this conductive coating inside, this uh, graphite coating. Uh, these owe so much of their, you know, technology to the old fashioned cathode ray tube television sets. So this thing puts out high voltage, but it also puts out at very high frequency, RF type frequencies like, ooh, possibly high tens to hundreds of kilohertz. I'm not sure the exact frequencies they operate at. But the main thing is that they then act as an antenna. So what you've got here inside, inside the glass, is basically an RF emitter. And the energy is trying to radiate from that. Um, but whereas with a standard a mobile phone antenna, you wouldn't see the energy. What we have are surrounding in here is a vacuum. And the first glass globes, the first experimental uh, plasma bulbs just contained air with a vacuum drawn to the point that the noble gases in the air that emit light like neon, argon, krypton, xenon would start glowing as the sort of RF energy passed through them. And the Later ones, these one, this one is so vivid that I'm guessing this one contains a mixture probably of, at the very least, neon and possibly xenon, but possibly neon argon and xenon. The xenon tends to impart a thin sort of wiggly lines, uh, and the neon gives that orangey glow at the end. And the traditional, the, the original globes were very sort of pressure critical, and if they, they were run at quite high power, they'd gradually sort of outgas inside, they'd actually just gradually, the pressure would change inside and they'd stop working. You occasionally need to sort of recharge them as such by drawing a new vacuum. Uh, but these ones, it does seem to be a lot more stable. <clears throat> so the reason it's just conductive at the end and not all the way down to the bottom here, and the reason they don't have a metal electrode in it's just simply because the energy can couple through the glass and it stops, it means you don't need any sort of fancy metal to glass seals, it's purely a sealed glass container. The antenna goes up to the end and is kept away, this cable is kept away deliberately by the corrugations in the plastic because if it touched too close then that would pass to the couple and you'd tend to get the, the sort of streamers going down the way or from that point and because the the opposite potential is effective on the other side of this transformer, which will be the circuit board, um, it would, they'd tend to stream down and you wouldn't get much activity at the top of the globe. So that's why they sort of shield the cable, they sort of keep it central away from the edges and then go up to this centrally mounted uh, area where it is conduct the conductive coating is hard against the inside. Uh, the older ones used to have a sort of spherical uh, appearance inside and the inside of that was not just coated in the sort of conductive graphite paint but it would also have the sort of uh, brass swarf shoved into it to make connections all over that and then the wire would get shoved into that just the bare wire just to make a connection to that but this is a lot simpler it's actually a clever design so um fundamentally that's it high voltage high frequency but very low current 
just acting as a radio transmitter that is made visible in that area. And when you touch it, you act as a capacitor. You basically, the gas is acting as one capacitor plate, the glass the dielectric, you're acting as the other capacitor, and you're providing a modest-ish ground reference for that energy. And that's why the streamers will tend to flow to your fingers. So that's the theory. And what I'm expecting to find in this globe when I open it is a little high voltage transformer, probably potted. I'm just going to turn the brightness up so we can see this better. I would expect a simple driver circuitry. It may even be a single transistor. It may even be a chip. There's only one way to find out, and that's to pop the lid off. I'm noting that this, uh, apart from being powered by USB, which is the preferred way to do it, although there is a slight downside to that, in the sense that if you're powering it from this USB port little unit here, or, or your computer for all that, when you're touching that, you're basically creating a sort of high voltage potential, effectively, uh, that if, you know, this was well grounded, you could actually probably draw a spark from the low voltage, the opposite side of this, the high voltage circuitry. Uh, so I'm not sure. These things can cause if jamming effects on electronic equipment. And it strikes me as it's not the sort of thing I'd want to plug into a computer again, because it does involve high voltage at uh, high frequency, like the little ionizers. Things you shouldn't really plug into your computer. Right, so what are we going to see here? There's a little high voltage wire stuffed up. Oh, look at that, there's so little. So here's the boss of the globe. It's got this piece of uh, the... Um, now, how is that actually connecting up there? Oh, it has. It's got the it's got the swerf just stuffed up the end, so it's using the same technique. And then it's got the flexible conduit stuffed up. Here's the ceiling pit where they've drawn the vacuum. And these things used to just have a rubber gland that mounted them in. It is. It's a rubber... It's really not changed from the first ones. It's basically a rubber grommet that, as the lamp's pushed in, it then sort of pushes out against the side. So theoretically, if it's enough, I could wiggle this off. Yes, I can. The globe. That's interesting. The circuitry, to all intents and purposes, if this doesn't have surface mount components on the bottom, it's just stuck on with self adhesive tape. Uh, it's got nothing in the bottom. I think we need to reverse engineer this. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Well, the circuitry is textbook as expected. Starting off at the power supply input, it's got a battery pack which is disconnected when you plug the USB jack in. So it supplies about 5 or 6 volts through a switch, which is this little switch in the circuit board here. And then there's a smoothing capacitor, 400 microfarad, 16 volt, which is just there really to act as a buffer for uh, the circuitry. And that's this capacitor here. The Transformer is a very specialised component. It's the sort of thing you could wind your own, but it's very difficult to, particularly when the open circuit voltage is so high and the frequency is so high, it's very hard to wind decent transformers. This is uh, all potted and resin internally. It's uh, it's the most, it's the bit that's worth buying the whole thing for. In fact, this circuit board is worth buying this whole product for. But the transformer has three windings. It's got the Primary winding, which is connected directly to a standard NPN transistor called a D882P, rated about 2 amps, I think. It's got the secondary winding, which is a, a very high impedance winding. It's basically got, measuring just the resistance, it was 2,000 ohms. Uh, so very fine wire, uh, and a lot of it, to step the voltage up high enough. And it's got the feedback winding, and both the primary and feedback winding have fairly low uh, impedance. In fact, it's quite hard measuring them. It's like sub-ohm level. So uh, there's a feedback uh, circuit based on the, these resistors primarily and capacitors to the base of the transistor. And initially when you power the circuit up, some current will flow through the feedback winding through the resistors and it'll start turning the transistor on. As soon as the transistor starts turning on, it will um, couple current into, actually it'll couple current into both these windings. But um, the feedback winding, when the current gets coupled in, will then increase its output and Effectively, you'll get a cascading effect that this will then drive this transistor on fully, and that will then stay on until the primary is pretty much the transformer is pretty much saturated uh, magnetically, and then the feedback uh, stops being covered across because it can't generate more magnetic field movement in the coil. Um, this results in then the sort of the feedback's reduced. It starts 
the magnetic field starts collapsing and it it's basically like a jewel thief. It, it's basically a self oscillating circuit that just resonates pretty much at the frequency of the transformer. And that's coupled across, this voltage has stepped up considerably. One end of the transformer is reference to the output, is reference to the zero volt rail, which that does mean that anything, that when you're touching this, the opposite potential is on your USB power bank or your laptop or whatever, and it means quite high voltages could appear across things like uh, ungrounded power supplies like this. So, um... Again, not the greatest thing to plug into a USB power supply or, you know, the plug-in type or your computer. But um, other than that, this circuit is just worth every penny. This circuit is, you know, this whole module, it's worth buying the plasma globe for this circuit board because it just takes me back to my youth of playing with high voltage at high frequency. It was just so much fun. Watch this. And yes, I've already given myself a zap off this uh, and burnt my finger slightly because it's high frequency, high voltage, and it does tend to find routes back to uh, ground in the most unexpected routes. So let's connect a big beefy neon tube to this. This is where I'm going to get a zap again. That's what happens. Ready? And energize. So if I actually turn off the uh, the overhead, I'm going to have to turn the overhead light off for you to see this I think, so uh, I'll do that and then I shall just adjust the exposure there we go, so this tube now is uh, coupling it, it's, it's being powered by a single electrode at one end, if I touch it basically speaking I'm shunting out that energy, so the energy is going back and it's shunting out through my fingers into ground, and if I was to get a fluorescent tube and touch it to there, the fluorescent tube will light too, and if I was to touch it over to there, it would light even brighter. Oh, isn't RF energy just so much fun? Uh, and the reason I got a shock off the switch, if I hold the end of this tube, I actually ground it by putting my finger and then touch it to there, that lights. That's why I was getting spark off that and uh, why I was burning my finger. So I'm going to have to actually now work out how to turn this, turn this off. Yeah, I'm going to grip the circuit board gingerly there and poke the switch with this tube. There we go. So, right. Uh, so, I'm just going to put this back together and then uh, talk a wee bit more about it because I, I just really like this circuit. So, back in a moment. So, that's it back together again. And uh, it's still capable of exciting things like fluorescent tubes and this big, huge neon tube if they're put near it. And as such, I have to remind you again that the... This isn't something you want to put too near any delicate electronic components because it can induce quite significant uh, voltages in neighbouring circuitry. So this did actually come from Banggood. I think you can get them from various sellers on eBay as well in shapes like skulls and things like that, different, different uh, shaped electrodes inside as well. And uh, I bought this a while back, but it's been sitting in the pile waiting for its video to be made. And two people uh, just mentioned uh, recently by email, uh, Jerry from Ireland and Stu from America, just mentioned plasma globes. And I thought, well, yeah, maybe it's about time to do this video about this. And I'm glad I did, because it's really nice to see that it uses the original circuitry um, that uh, they've always used. It's not like being changed to a modern switchboard chip. And the quality of the little transformer inside looks pretty good. It's, you know, it's custom designed for this specific application of being a very high frequency, high voltage output. So uh, it's pretty neat. I like this. I like it a lot.